Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and in this final ranged attack video, we've got a whole lot going on. We're gonna make it so you can toggle between archer and knight mode with a button press. We're gonna animate in eight directions for firing the bow, make it so the player actually stops when shooting, and fix a number of other little bugs. This is probably the longest video I've ever made, so let's just get right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is make it so that this arrow buries itself in whatever object it hits. We'll change its sprite, and also make it attach itself to those objects. To do this, we're gonna have to head into our arrow script. Now, similar to how we created a layer mask to keep track of whether or not we're hitting an enemy, we're gonna make a new public layer mask, which will be our obstacle layer. We're also gonna to need to talk to our sprite render. We'll just call it SR. At this point, then we'll make a public sprite reference to the buried sprite. Now then, down in our on collision enter method, we're gonna do something very similar to what we did with the enemy. We're just gonna add an else if statement. That way it'll only run this code if it hasn't already hit an enemy. Then, similar to what we did in the last video, we're going to use a bitwise operator to convert our obstacle layer, as well as the layer our arrow just collided with into binary, and see if they're a match. If they are, we want to bury our arrow into that object. Now to do this, we're going to create a brand new method. We'll call this one attach to target. And all we have to do here is send along the information of the object we just hit. That way the arrow will know where exactly the object is. I'm also going to do the same thing anytime we hit an enemy. Now we can come down below and actually create the attached to target method. And remember we just need to make it so that it's wanting to accept in a transform value. Here we'll just call it target. Now the first thing we'll want to do when our arrow hits something is change its sprite. So we'll just tell the sprite render that its new sprite will be equal to our buried sprite. Next we want to stop the arrow so that it doesn't keep moving. So we'll just tell its rigid body that its velocity should be set to vector 2.0. Then we're going to actually tell the rigid body that is kinematic equals true. That said, we do want the arrow, if it hits an enemy, to follow the enemy around like it's stuck into him. So we're going to set its transform to have a new parent, in this case, whatever the target is that it hit. Next, let's go ahead and open up the prefab of our arrow. First thing we want to do is make sure it knows where its own sprite renderer is. So let's drag the sprite renderer into that box. We then need to find our buried sprite. Finally, we need to let it know what layer is going to be in our obstacle layer. I've already created a layer called Obstacle, and if you don't have one, just add that layer now. Next, we just want to pick which objects on our map actually will count as obstacles. If you've been following along with my tile map series, then you'll have a setup like this, where certain elements in the tile map are labeled as collision objects and others as non. If you're using a different tile map setup, that's all right. Just find whichever tile maps you want your arrow to collide with. We then want to select them and make sure they belong to the obstacle layer. That should be all you need to do, and you can get into the game, and now when you fire, your arrows should in fact be attaching themselves to objects. We can then try the same thing on our enemy, and for the most part, that's looking pretty good. All right, so with that done, it's time to get our knight set up so that he actually is animated when shooting this. I'm using the Tiny Swords Asset Pack, and so I'm going to do eight directional shooting using that pack, though you can adapt this with whatever assets you are using. Additionally, I'll make it so we can swap between knight and archer mode with the press of a button. I'm just going to take my animation pane and dock it at the bottom of the screen here. And while this is not an animation video, I will show how to create the first one just to give you an idea of my process. So first of all, we're just going to grab the Tiny Swords Archer. I'm going to be using the Archer Blue here. I have already gone in and pre-sliced the Archer here, so you can kind of see what that looks like. If you're not sure how to do any of this, feel free to check out the animating video that we did earlier in the series. All right, so it's important here that we click on the player, the actual game object you're going to be animating, and then we're just going to head down below here and click Create New Clip. What we want to do here is create an archer version of idle and walking, as well as an archer shooting in each direction we want to animate him in. So here I'm just going to go into my animations folder, and I'm just going to start off with archer underscore shoot up. All right, at this point, I'm just going to grab each of the frames in archer blue that I want to use. In my case, that was numbers 12 all the way through to 19. I'm just going to drag them up here. And of course, at first, it's going to be really fast. So we're going to want to stretch that out a bit so that each frame lasts for a couple of frames. Also, if I hit play now, it looks pretty good, except the very last frame is only playing for a single frame before it resets, whereas each of the other frames lasts for about three. I just want to make it not do that at the end. So I'm just going to grab that final frame copy it and then actually paste it down a little later. That will keep the animation from catching at the end and it just looks a lot smoother now. Now to make this extra smooth, we wanna make sure there's equal distance between each frame. And if I zoom in, you can see that mine isn't exactly right here. So I'm just gonna pull mine into about 16 frames. You can see now 
everything's lasting for the same amount. And then I'm actually just going to take the final frame and double it up so it lasts about twice as long or three times as long as the others. That way, at the end of the shot, he kind of has this, like, cocky follow-through where he leaves the bow hanging in the air for just a moment, which I think just gives it a nice feel. At this point, you can go ahead and create all of your other directions. You're going to want the archer shoot down. We're going to need down diagonal. A horizontal one, which we can reuse for left and right. And the same thing with our up diagonal and down diagonal. We can flip those on either side. After that, you're going to want to just create an archer walking as well as an archer idle state. Now, before we hook up all of these animations, let's just make sure to click on them and turn off loop time. Next, I'm just going to go into my animator pane. And actually, all we want to do to get started is just get rid of all of these states here that it's auto-created as we're going to make them ourselves in just a slightly different way. Now, if you've been following along, you'll have something like this in your animator already. But the way it's just set up is that we spend most of our time in the walking and idle states. And we only leave them if is attacking is set true. At that point, we then enter the slash state, and then it transfers back out, and we get back into idle and walking. We essentially want to create a similar situation for all of our archer states. Though, before we do that, let's just create a new blend tree, as this is how we're going to manage choosing between each of our different archer directional shooting. I'll show how to set that up in just a moment, but let's set up our transitions first. Now, similar to how we created a bool for is attacking, we're also going to add a parameter. This one will be a bool called is shooting. We'll then make a transition that goes to is shooting anytime is shooting is true. We'll then leave is shooting, and here we're just going to give it an exit time of 1 with 0 transition duration. That way we will make it so that when is shooting is false, as long as it's played the entire animation, it can then transfer back out of shooting and go back into the idle and walking stuff. Now here on is walking, we want to make it so that we leave walking two different ways. One will be the way we already have. If we're attacking, we're going to leave walking, but we're also going to add this new state here, and it's going to be immediate with no exit time, so that as long as is shooting is true, we will also leave walking. We'll then do the same thing for our idle state, making another transition, so that not only will we leave when we're attacking, but we'll also leave if is shooting is true. So we've now got a really nice setup to handle all of our idling, walking, shooting, and attacking. However, it's all set up with our knight graphics right now, and we want to use our archer animations. So here I'm just going to go to layers and add a new one. We're going to add archer layer, and we're going to sync this one to our base layer. This will just make it so that it has the exact same layout. It's just that we can put in different animations. So here for walking, I'll put in my archer walking. For idle, I'll make sure that this one is my archer idle. And this way when we've enabled the archer layer, it's going to play these animations instead of the standard night ones. At this point, we can leave slash empty as when we are in archer mode, we're never going to call slash. And now it's time to set up our shoot blend tree. Now let's just pause here for a moment. As if you want to make something like The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, where rather than switching modes between knight and archer, you just want one mode that can fire a bow or attack with a sword. If that's the case, you don't need to add an archer layer. You can just go straight to the blend tree part here. Now, when I added my transitions, it actually converted this one out of blend tree. So all we want to do here is right click and go create new blend tree in this state. We can then double click it. And now we've got our blend tree here. And the way a blend tree works is it allows you to give certain parameters in. And based on those parameters, it will decide which animation to play. So to do this, we need to add two more parameters. These ones are going to be float values. And we'll use aim x and another float called aim y. These are the same names we used in our code, so we can keep it nice and clear. All right, so let's set up our blend tree. So first of all, you'll notice it has this horizontal value here right now. For blend type, we just want to go to 2D, simple directional, and make sure that it's using a aim x and aim y as its parameters. We then want to add motions, which are just going to be our animations. And yeah, we're going to need eight of them here, one for each possible direction. All right, once we've got those in, we can start adding the actual animations themselves. So here I'm just going to start with my shoot up. And so we want to shoot upward if there is no X input, but if our aiming for the Y is directly up. And you'll notice that once I put those in, the little dot appears directly above my player here. Next, we can do our up diagonal. And this is going to be if X is 1 and Y is 1. And there we go. We'll then proceed through adding each. So I'll do horizontal, which will be an X of 1 and a Y of 0. We'll then do our down diagonal, which will be 1 on the x and negative 1 on the y. Our down, which will have no y value, but a negative 1 on the y. And we'll proceed around until we've got all eight directions put in. 
Once you're done, you should see all eight positions on your grid, and you can actually go into the blend tree and just kind of play around with the aim x and y values, and you can see that the little dot in the middle will gravitate towards a specific one. This is which animation will play when you are facing in those directions. Now the way we're going to set this up is just go back and forth between functionality on our combat and bow script so that when we're shooting we enable the bow but turn off combat and when we want to be warrior we turn on combat but turn off the bow. Now let's head into our player bow script to actually get our animator updating the way we want it to. So here we're going to need a reference to the animator. I'm just going to call it anim and then let's head it down into update and anytime we press shoot and the shoot timer is enabled we're just going to get tell our anim to set its bool the one we just created called is shooting to true. This will send it into the blend tree, and now we just need to make sure that it gets the aim, x, and y values. To do this, we'll just tell our anim to set its float. In this case, we'll start with the anim x, and we just want it to be equal to our aim direction's x value. We'll then do the same thing for our aim y. Now each time we shoot, we're calling is shooting, which goes into our blend tree, and we're giving our blend tree the values at the start of the shooting process. All that remains then is to actually stop shooting. So once we've taken the shot, we're going to tell our anim to set its bool is shooting back to false, which will allow it to go to walking and idling again. All right, so now we just want to make it so we can actually switch between the different layers we made in our animator. To do this, we're going to make it that any time our bow is enabled, we're going to turn on that layer, and any time the bow is disabled, we'll turn back on the warrior label. To do this, we're going to add an on enable method. And so whenever this script is enabled, we just want to tell our animator to set its layer weight. And here we'll start with layer 0, which is our base layer, and we're going to turn that one off. We're just going to set it to 0. We'll then take layer 1, which was our archer layer, and set its weight to be 1. We want to do the opposite when we disable this script, setting layer 0, the base one, to 1, and this layer, the archer one, to 0. Now anytime we toggle this script on or off, it will just automatically change those layers. At this point, we're more or less at a testable moment. So in Unity, let's just make sure we assign our animator to the bow script. And I'm also going to turn off the bow script and leave combat on so that we'll begin in night mode. Also, in our animator, I just missed one step earlier, and that's for our transition going from entry to idle. We want to make sure to click on that one specifically. And at the moment, we can only go to idle if we're not attacking. We also want to make sure that we only go to idle if we are not shooting. So let's put is shooting false. This will enable us to do a broken test where we can attack in night mode, turn our bow script on, turn off night mode if we want. We do in fact change to our idle for shooting. However, when we go to actually press the shoot key, we don't get our animation. We just stick around in idle, which is obviously not what we want. Now the reason for this has to do with where we are turning off our shooting animation. Right now we turn it off so quickly after we call it to start that it's not in fact running at all. And if we were to comment this out, we'd be able to run a play test where we can turn our bow back on, switch into bow mode, and now we're able to play the animation. Though you'll notice I'm getting stuck in the animation now because obviously we can't exit it. So at the moment we're stuck with two timing related problems. The first is that when we shoot, he's instantiating the arrow before he finishes pulling the bow back, which just looks funny. The other has to do with our animator. Since we're no longer turning off the shoot animation, we get trapped inside of our shoot state. So we need a more dynamic way to call the shoot animation and toggle it on and off. Now this is a relatively easy fix. At the moment in update, whenever our shoot timer gets to zero and we push the button, we play the animation to shoot, but then we immediately call shoot, which instantiates the arrow too early and then turns off the animation too early as well. We need some sort of a delay here. So first let's just re-enable our is shooting false, but create a situation where we can delay. I'm going to get rid of the shoot method here, and rather than call shoot every time we play the animation, we're going to call it dynamically in Unity. Now what we're going to do here is use animation events. So I'm just going to go to my first shoot, in this case shoot down, and I'm going to click the point in the animation where he should be releasing the arrow. Once I find that point, I can then click on this icon here to create an animation event. Over in my inspector, I'll now see a function dropdown, which will show all the public functions that are available on this game object. I'm going to select shoot, and so now only when he hits the point of the animation where he's releasing the arrow will he call the shoot method. You can just click on that animation event, hit command C or control C on PC, and paste it into each of your other animations so that in each animation when we're ready to shoot, we do in fact call the shoot method. Now this is turning into a monster video, but I'm determined to get it all done here, so we've got four problems left to fix. The first is that we need a way to no longer have to manually switch these scripts on and off. We want to do this in an automated fashion. 
Another is that we want to make it so that the arrow doesn't keep bumping our character each time we fire. Third, whenever I shoot diagonally I get this multi-fire of arrows, which is kind of cool but probably not what we want. And then finally, I also want to make it so that our player stops while shooting, otherwise we get this funny thing where he's running and shooting the arrow at the same time, which is just hard to aim and it looks funny as well. So let's get started on all this. Okay, we're going to start with the easiest problem, which is fixing the bump that the arrow is giving us. So let's double click our arrow prefab, and all I'm going to do here is change my collider so the back of the arrow doesn't have a collider on it. We'll just put it at the front, that way it can bury itself into enemies in the front, and the tip of the arrow on the back isn't bumping into things, doing weird physics stuff like moving our player or clipping on trees or anything like that. Now the issue of the diagonal firing multiple arrows is simply because anytime we call shoot and the shoot timer is below zero, we play the shoot animation. The problem is that it's possible for this to happen multiple times in a single frame because update fires so fast. So all we want to do is go down to our shoot method and make sure that even though we may call the animation multiple times, we only actually shoot once. This can be done with a single line, just making it so that only if the shoot timer is below zero can we instantiate the arrow. Alright, so in game if we enable the bow now, whether we're in night mode or not, our diagonal is working properly now, and you'll notice that we're not bumping the player anymore when we shoot. Next up is to add an automatic toggle for the bow. To do this we're going to need to create a button first of all, so let's go to edit, project settings, and then head over to our input manager. Now my input manager has a bunch of buttons here, I'm up to 33, but we're going to add one more. And then I'll scroll all the way down and it will have made a copy of whatever your last button was, in my case toggle skill tree. I'm just going to rename this to change equipment. I'm going to set it to be on a hotkey of Q, though you can pick whichever button you like. Also make sure to just check your settings, you want to make sure that this one if you're using a button is set to key your mouse button. Alright, we're going to create our final piece of code for this, which is just going to be player underscore change equipment. Now we can get rid of the start method as we won't be needing it, and we're just going to need a reference to each of the scripts we're enabling or disabling. So I'll make a public player combat reference, which I'll call combat, and another public player bow reference, which we'll call bow. Now in update we just want to check all the time for the input, and in this case we're just looking if there is a button down, which is change equipment. Anytime we do press the button, we just want to toggle these two scripts. So I'm going to take my combat, check if it's enabled, and if it is, we're going to set it to not enabled. This also works in reverse, so that if it's not enabled, it will turn it on. We'll do the same thing for our bow, typing bow.enabled equals not bow.enabled. Now we'll just switch which is enabled and which is disabled each time we press the button. Now if you don't want to turn off your sword and you want to keep it enabled at all times, you can just get rid of that top line and just toggle whether or not the bow is enabled by a button press. We do just need to do a quick setup here, so let's click on player and add our player.changeEquipment script here. I'm just going to drag the combat script into the combat box and do the same for bow. And finally when we get in the game we can press Q in order to switch between archer and knight modes now. Alright, now the final fix is just to get rid of this awkward way that our player continues moving while shooting which makes it really hard to aim. To do this we're going to pop first of all into our player movement script. Alright, so in player movement, right now in our fixed update, we have all of our movement happening anytime we're not knocked back. So what we want to do is disable this if we're currently shooting. To do this, I'm just going to come up top here, and right below our private bool is knocked back, I'm going to make a public bool, which we'll call is shooting. We'll then just come down here, and I want to do two things. First of all, I'm going to turn this into an else if statement, and up here we're going to go if is shooting equals true. And any time that is shooting is true, we're just going to make our rigid body's velocity equal to a vector 2.0. So now if we are shooting, we'll stop the player dead, and he won't be able to run this code because of the else here in the if statement. All we need to do now is toggle this bool on and off. So let's head to player bow. Alright, now in order to talk to that script, we are going to have to make a public reference to our player movement. Then we'll just come down below here, and right before we start the animation, we're just going to tell player movement that it is shooting bool should be set to true. I'm then just going to copy that line, come down to the bottom here where we turn our is shooting animation off, I'll paste it in there, and now we're just going to set is shooting to false. Now the only hookup here in Unity is just to make sure that our player movement script gets dragged into that player movement box, and we're ready to test. Alright, we're now up and running. We can toggle back and forth between knight and archer modes with a button press, and when in archer mode we can in fact fire the bow, and he stops his running while shooting, which just makes it a lot easier to aim because I'm not running into enemies while I'm pulling the arrow out. 
All right, I hope you found this one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like or subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until that time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.